his name is above his name is above depression his name is above loneliness oh his name is above disease his name is above cancer his name is above every other name that is who Jesus, and that is who you are. Oh, I know that is who you are. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your head. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God. It's running now. It's running. 
Amen. 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 Is it going to be something a little different? Yeah, this week I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, we're going to be doing, doing Bible study together. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll provide the scriptures. And then I'm going to ask persons to comment on it. It's, it's like a, a culmination of what I've been teaching over the last couple of weeks. So um, I'm going to share my screen. This week we're gonna look at be looking at an example of my doing a study about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then ask a coin tell me read the first thing I do, I would find as much scriptures as about those cities. I would use the, the, the outline concord sorry, un online concordance that to find passages that reference those cities. Second, I would then try to identify the principles of God ju judging a person, a community or a nation. Third, after this, I would examine the circumstances surrounding them being judged. And fourth, I'd write, I'd try to write down the points in order, then make my conclusion. I'm going to ask us to participate. It's not a one-off thing, it's all working together. I'm going to look at the second point first. Principle of God judgment. Job 1 verse 11 to 12. Concluding. But no stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Job 2 verse 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incite me against him to destroy him without cause. Ezekiel 22 from 24 to 31. Son of man say twenty-four to thirty-one. Yeah. Son of man say to her to say to her to her, you you are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasures and per and precious things. They have made many windows, widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the, the holy and unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath, so that I am profane among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gains. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false vision and dividing less of them, saying, Thus said the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken, the people of the land have used oppression, oppression committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed this, the stranger. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found no one, therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord. 
All right. God. Let's go back to first two passages in Job 1 and Job 2. Notice something. Uh, Satan never did what he wanted. He did based on God allowing him to do it. Judgment is based on God's allowance. God told Satan, uh, do so and so to him. Chapter 1, chapter 2, God says, although, although you have incited me against him. So though Satan did, God to the blame. What he's saying is that God is so in charge that he said, listen, Job is righteous, but Satan could not have done it without my permission. So I take the blame. But I allowed it for a reason. There's a reason behind it. And there's something to be learned. God allows judgment for a reason. He's in charge. Is he get 24? Huh? God, God, God. Read, read this going. Chapter 2, verse. I was asking about when did God take the blame. Really? Although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. Okay. Satan incited. God is saying, Satan, you, have, you called me to incite me to, against him. God took the blame. Sir. I was incited. Um, yeah. Oh, look at it's, it's get 22. The nation deserves judgment, isn't that true? Your land that is not cleansed. The consequence of, of our prophets in her means like a royal lion, tearing the prey. They have devoured people, they have taken treasure and precious things, they have made many widows in their midst. The priests have violated, violated my law, they deserve judgment, provide my holy things. The, not distinguish between the holy and the unholy. Now, have they made the difference, known the difference between the unclean and the clean? Our princes are like will turn and pray. Our prophets, our people, everybody was doing wrong. Look at verse, verse um, 30. So I sought for a man among them would make up make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. I said that he sought for somebody to come and make up stand for them. But I found no one. That tells you something about tell you something about um our God judgment. God seeks for somebody to come and I said to him, God don't need to judge him for this reason, for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, um, so God said he sought for a man. He sought for a man. He sought for a man. So God never judges before he seeks for somebody to come out and plead for somebody on their behalf. Because, in, because of this, therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed these on their own head. Because nobody was there. God had to do it. That's all God's judgment is. Not his first move. He doesn't like to do it. But because nobody is standing for, for, right, for, for, for the injustice. Yeah, he has to do it because he has no choice. Next scripture, Psalm 103, verse 6. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. It says oh, about God. Many people don't know this. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. Compassion and gracious. He's compassion. He, he knows what you're going through. He's compassion and gracious. Slow to anger. And a bone in mercy. A bone in mercy. That's the God that serve. Romans 5.20 The law came in so that the offense would increase, but where sin increased, grace abound all the more. To say saying that that those sin is there, the grace of God is even more than the sin. 
No, no matter how sinful, sinful a man get, God's grace is bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Um, look at Acts 17, 30, 30. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. A, a question. When, um, when, when people commit murder, before the law, before the Christ came, and did the arm and that stuff, we got to overlook it. But it, I want to answer from people. What the scripture says? In terms of ignorance. Oh, God overlooked, yeah. Understand, ignorance, merit to grace of God. When, when they were murdering Christ, Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. One of the worst in there, killing Christ, murder. And he says, Father, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. Romans 4.15. I'm going to ask some others to read it for me. Romans 4.15. It's on the screen. Someone, someone, I mean, I might mic and read it. Romans 4.15. Anybody could unmute a mic and read it? Romans 4.15. Hello? I'm trying to see, but because I'm on my phone. Oh, uh, 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 no, no. Could somebody find it, please? Somebody read it, please, Romans 4.15. Romans 4.15. Because the law brings about wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Wait a second. What about the man that lives in China who commits murder before the, before the law? Is it accounted for him? Answer it. Anybody think, think about that? Romans 4.15, anybody answer that? You can look at Romans 5.13. Unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not counted against anyone when there is no law. So the man that caught murder for the law. But the scripture says, it's not counted against him. So it's, it's sin, it's sin. But God don't hold against him because of ignorance. There are people that are crying for God to judge people. And the truth told they're ignorant. And I, I discovered beating a person don't change their heart, change their actions. Or they do it, not what, why they do it. Romans 4, 5, 13, until the law sin was in the world. But sin is not counted against anyone. There's no law. Look at verse John 10, 70, 11. Could somebody read it, please? John 10, 70, I want interaction. John 10, 70, 11. Hello? John 10, 70, 11. Can I, can I read from the Bible on my phone? Instead of yes, 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 yes. Let me, let me look for it. One second. John 10. And So long, I'll, I'll take it. it. Says then Jesus said to them again, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, and the door of the sheep, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. The sheep did not hear them, and the door, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find a pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I'm going to ask a, a very tr troublesome question. I use the word troublesome, it's deliberate. I'm going to go back to it. This is saying that that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I'm going to trouble it, be troublesome here. When, when Israel was in Egypt, and Egypt was was demolished, who did the, what was it, was it the Lord or, or the thief did the destruction? I'm going to ask, I'm asking a question and a new response. When Israel was in Egypt, and that Egyptians were, de were demolished. Was it God that did it, or was it the thief? It was God that did it. Okay, anybody else? God. Anybody else? Come on. Listen, they, 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 they differ with this class. You, you, don't, you don't go to the back of the class if you're wrong. You'll come to the front of the class if you're right. They just want interaction. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Yes, Pastor D. Who did yes, it? Yes, Pastor D. What's God? I'm going to share. It's God that did it. Yeah. One more person. Answer. Come on. I'm going to share. Come on, man, please. I need any interaction. Come on, one more person. Come on. You understand my purpose is to help us to, to grow. Can anybody else give an answer? Hello. It's important for me that you all get the message. Come on, please. Hello. Hello. Why most people have gotten silent? Why? I'm gonna share a scripture. Now look at Psalm seventeen. People have gotten silent on me. No, when I'm not silent, you know where I am. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to share a scripture. Psalm 17. Psalm 17. All right. This scripture talk about God working in Egypt. Look at what it says in 43. Don't. 
evil. When he worked his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan, turned their rivers into blood and their streams that they could not drink, he sent swarms of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He also gave their crops to the caterpillar and their labor to the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He also gave up their cattle to the hail and their flocks to fiery lightning. He cast on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. He made a part for his anger. He did not spare their souls from death. Yes, I'm still there. Look what he said. He said he sent by sending angels of destruction among them. So God, God did something. He sent angels of destruction. Now, if if if, if we read scriptures, one of the names for the angel of destruction is Abaddon Ap Apollyon, which is actually a demon spirit. In fact, when God brought the destroyer upon Egypt, the blood of Jesus. But the blood of the lamb was put on the doorpost. When he saw the blood, he walked over. What I mean is that, just like we saw Job 1 and Job 2, God told, him, God told Satan to go and affect, affect Job. Then he said to Satan, You incited me against him. God took blame, but he never did the task. You understand that? He took blame, he never did the task. It could not happen without, without his permission. That's why we looked at the scripture in Ezekiel. That talks about this sin that they committed. And God sought for a man to make a bed. Though people deserve judgment, God himself does not carry out the judgment. Destruction, even angels, carried out. If somebody would stand for the person, God would allow the judgment to pass. So, the, so yes and no. But God did it, but He never did it. He allowed, He permitted it, He licensed it. If somebody would have stood for them, they'd have been. Spared. What you're saying. Um, sorry for interrupting, but what you're saying is that. Um, whenever there is any form of judgment or any, yeah, judgment, he basically release or authorize that particular judgment or destruction. That's what you're saying. Yes, but instead he, of judging it, judging um, himself, kind of himself. Yeah, that's why this it's easy twenty two tell us Satan is calling. A name for is it the traducer? Is that he makes he condemns? We saw the scripture in John ten that says the thief don't, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the destroying angels, the evil angels, the destruction. He's the one that, that God, God allows. God, do, do you recall um, Jesus saying to Peter, Satan said said has a desire to sift like wheat. Satan has a desire to sift like wheat. Satan yeah. make a request all the time. For example, Sister Claudine, uh, humble. Let's say, uh, JJ comes, JJ comes, comes in, and he says, "Mommy, I want you to. I'm gonna bring a, a girl home. I'm gonna sleep in a room with me." And Claudine, because of fear for him, said, "Okay, J, I disagree, but okay. Guess what you have done? You have opened the door for for Satan to work in life." He said, Jay, I hear what you say, but I can't allow it. That's your choice, but not, not my choice. Not in my house. No, what you have done is, is, is close it off 
and work in, in life. Because they all the time seek to find ways to judge you and condemn you and we have a kind of life. But if somebody is standing in the gap and make up the edge, you can't stop it. There's a reason why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this. This is the next point. Circumstances surrounding Solomon and Gomorrah being judged. Um, Genesis 13, 13. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. So they were, they were wicked, right? They were wicked, exceedingly wicked. Before the Lord. Look at verse 22. Sorry, chapter 18, verse 20 to 21. And the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. All right, let, let, let me explain this. The scripture says in chapter 13, that they were wicked sinners before the Lord. So God knew they were sinners. But look at verse 20. I, they all cry against them. Who was crying against them? The traducer Satan. He was crying against him. God said, I'll go and see. Said, Come on. God is omniscient. He knows everything. What does he need to go and see? But he said something. The all cry against the all cry. Somebody is crying against him. Somebody has been accusing them before God. They wanted judgment and Sodom. And come on. And the city, the cities of the plain. Five cities. Look at chapter 19, verse 13. For he for we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has Sorry. has grown great because the face of before. the Lord has grown great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Yeah, let's pause a second. Now this is this is um this is when the angels came down with, with, with the Lord to Abraham's house and to Lot's house. He said they all cry against him. Something has been crying against him. I've been accusing them. God knew they were wicked. But someone somebody was saying, God they're wicked. Judge him, God judge him, God judge him. Some of those saying, judge him. There's a cry against. God knew that. He said, I'll go, I'll go down and see. Come on, God the omniscient. I'll, I'll tell you why God, God came down to see. God, chapter 2 Peter 2 6. And he come, condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them. An example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter. Jude 1 verse 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same they in the same way as these indulge in gross immorality, immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. No, 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 don't forget this. The scripture in Ezekiel that says what? So I sought for a man to stand in the gap. A man among them stand in the gap. Make a wall that I should not destroy them. Therefore no. Therefore I, therefore I have I poured on my indignation. Because God could not find anybody. He had to pour it out. Somebody, somebody was before God saying, God, judge Solomon and the city of the plain. They have sinned and God knew their sin. But somebody was crying out. I could show from scriptures all the time. Zechariah, Peter, Satan comes to God and says, God, judge him. And God has, has, has no option but to judge him. Because nobody stands in the gap. All right, in Genesis, no, I deliberately share that. We're going to go back to some scriptures about Solomon Gomorrah. 
God did not just destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but what is called the cities of the plain. I'm going to read about them. Genesis 10, 19. The church of the Canaanites extended from Sidon, Sidon as you go towards Gerar, as far as Gaza, as you go towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. This is a... Oh. So they mentioned four to five cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. They are called the cities of the plain. This is the first time the city of Sodom is mentioned in the Bible. They mentioned two other cities that were in the same region as they were. They were called cities of the plain. They were Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zebub, and Bila. Because of a famine, Abraham and Lot and, and they also went to Egypt. In Genesis 30, we read about them returning to the south. The land was not able to sustain the livestock and caused strife between Abraham and Lot. It was agreed that whatever Lot, whatever land Lot would settle on, Abraham would choose the opposite one. Genesis 13, 10 to 13 tells us the decision. It reads. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of Jordan, and it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plains of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, where Lot settled in the city of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly, and sinners against the Lord. Now no, we say Lot's reason for choosing the land was well watered, ideal land for his livestock. This passage describes Sodom standing for Lord. They were wicked and sinners for Lord. Chapter 14 describes a, a war between four kings and this city is on the plane. I'm going to chapter 40. Find the notes. I'll go back to 80 when I'm finished. No, according to, sorry. Can I read it, please? And it came to pass in the days of Amrath, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elazar, Chedor Lomo, <laughs> <laughs> king of yeah. Elam, and Kidan, king of nations. Kidan, yeah of nations, Tidal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Bera, king of Gomorrah, Bersha, Bersha king of Gomorrah, Shimnab, king of Adma, Shema, king of, oh my God, <laughs> with me, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these joined together in the valley of Sidon, that is the salt sea. Twelve years they serve. And in the 13th year, they rebelled. I right, pause there. No, a war took place, and the, the five cities lost the war. They were carried captive. Abel, with God's help, he armed his servants, 200, and, 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 and 200 servants, and his friends, Eshkal, um, Eshkal, Eshkal, Mamre, and 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 Mamre, Eshkol, and there's another, another brother that the them 
went to, to, went to Abraham with their, their forces and they won the victory. When, when they won the victory, Abraham went first, his nephew, Lot. Uh, with some, I mean, they won a victory. No, no, the, the point I want to bring out is that God was showing Sodom and the other five four cities grace. They lost a war. They were taken captive. Abraham went after the, the men. And he, he, he normally had to win a victor. When a man is, 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 is just, he just beat five cities. So, so his arm was motivated. They were more than Abraham. God used Abraham to, 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 to give, bring victory. And I think God was showing Sodom and Gomorrah a chance again to experience grace. Abraham did defeat the enemies. And God used Abraham to bring back, to bring victory. So we see God trying to intervene. No, no, if Lot had not moved to, to, to Sodom, Abraham, Abraham would have no reason to go there. Only because his, his nephew went to live in Sodom. I'm saying that God allowed Lot to go live in Sodom to show mercy to Sodom. They have a reason for going there. A reason for showing them the, the war would have taken place whether Lot lived there or not. Because Lot lived there, God used Abraham to defeat the enemies. And they saw the mercy of God firsthand. They should have lost everything. They saw the mercy of God firsthand. God, God was given an opportunity to recognize him. I think I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Give me a second. There's no scripture I need to read. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this. Da, 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 da. Look, look at this. Matthew 11.23. And you, Capernaum, will not be exalted to heaven, will you? You will descend to Hades. For if the miracles had occurred in Sodom, which occurred in you, it would have remained it to this day. You used to say, listen, I know what would have spared Sodom. If the miracles that were worked in you were there, they'd have, they'd have been spared. Next scripture, Mark 11, 24. So Matthew 11, 24. Nevertheless, I say to you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Look at 10, 10, 12. I say to you, it will be more tolerable in this day for Sodom than for that city. Look, 17, 29. But on that day, on the day that that lot went out for, from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroy them all. No, no, listen. The God I serve is a very merciful God. And he knew what would have spared Sodom. He said, if if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, they they'd have been spared to this day, remain unto this day. So the question is, if, if Jesus knew the, reason, the way to save Sodom, why didn't he do something about it? If he knew that the miracles done in Capernaum were done in Sodom, did that change? Why didn't you do something about it? I suggest that he did. By first allowing Lot to go live among them. They get captured and God showed the mercy for them to be delivered. They they, they Abraham is his, his servant defeated their enemies. That's one. Two Um, next scripture, James 18 and 19, tells us about, about God judging Sodom. No, no, think about this. The Lord and two angels went to Abraham's house to eat food. Answer the question, does God need food? Does God need food? No. Somebody answer that. No. No. Why think he went? The scripture says in chapter 18. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Chapter 18. 
Chapter 18. Look, I have to watch. Feed open. Give me a second. I need, I need first read. Genesis 18. The Lord is leaving Abraham's house. And he said something. I can't, I can't do something in the earth without talking to Abraham. And he said, Abraham, about the fact that you're going to destroy Sodom. And Abraham began to pray. I began to ask him to spare Sodom for 50 righteous, then for 40, then for 30. Verse 16, done. And they began to ask God, and God says, yes, Abraham, every time. Now, why did God come to Abraham to give Abraham a chance to intercede for Sodom? He gave Abraham a chance to intercede. And can you see something? Look at verse. Look at verse. Verse 33. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Abraham stopped asking God. God said yes every time. He stopped at 10. And God said this every time. Abraham stopped. Not God stopped. Abraham stopped. God responded to Abraham. He wanted to spare Sodom, but he had to allow a man to stand in the gap. There are limits to what God can do based on what he, he has said in his word. He cannot go beyond his word. He can't break his word. Yet our Lord said Abraham to intercede for Sodom. That's why he came there, not for food, but to give him a chance to intercede for, for Sodom. Look, look at chapter 19. Now the Lord came down with two angels in chapter 18. In chapter 19, now the, the two angels came to Sodom. Not sure and told them. The Lord left. There's no need for him to be there anymore. Only two angels came because he came to Abraham for Abraham to intercede for Sodom. Abraham stopped. And God had to judge Sodom. But it's so interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna close with this with, with some stats. I want to look at from verse. 17. Can I read a coin? Verse 17. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please know my Lord. Indeed, no, you, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this this thing also, in that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. So God spared one city called Zoar. You know why? Because Lot asked. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? God spared one city because Lot asked. I believe if Eva had said, God, if one righteous be found there, God will respond because there's no righteous there except Lot. But it's interesting, Lot never lived there for long. Never lived at Zohar. He eventually left, went to the mountains. A cave in the mountain where his daughter had sex, daughters had sex with him and he had children. Lot never lived there for long. 
I'm going to show you something interesting. The city should have been destroyed. So was one of the cities on the plane. Should have been destroyed. I'm going to show you some, some interesting about Zohar. I'm going to ask, can anybody see this? All right, read, read that for me. Ancient, ancient world's largest cemetery identified at biblical Zohar. What is the Zohar? Largest, ancient world, largest cemetery. I mean, many people live there. Tons of people live there. I mean, in the, God spread Zohar, and Zohar became the largest city, largest cemetery. I mean, tons of people live there. Let's read about Zora. Make it read At the southeastern end of the... Yeah. Okay, so thousands of ancient burials uncovered southeast of the Dead Sea. At the southeastern end of the Dead Sea, nestled between the, the salt encrusted shore of the sea and the dark foreboding slope of the Trans Jordanian Highlands, lies biblical Zoar, ancient Zora or Zora. According to the Bible and early Christian tradition, Lot and his daughters escaped to Zoar after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But as author explain in the death of the Dead Sea, the harsh, desolate hills of Zoar, located at the lowest spot of Earth, sheltered what is possibly the ancient world largest cemetery, which served for thousands of years as a favored bur burial ground for countless people and fates. The ancient burial that politics has discovered over the course of three decades working in Zoar have shed light on the canopy of cultures and religions that were found here from the early Bronze Age and thereafter including Nabatheans, Jews, and Christians. Keep reading. Other than is Israel, no country has as many biblical sites and association as Jordan, Mount Nebo from where Moses gazed at the Promised Land. Bethany beyond the Jordan, where John baptized Jesus, Lot's cave, where Lot and his daughters sought refuge after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and many more. Travel. The earliest. The earliest ancient burials discovered by um, Politis. Politis date to the early Bronze Age. These cyst tombs were built during the heyday of the. Re the Regions two largest sites, Bab Eddar and Numerica, considered by some to be the ruins of the ill fated city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Some 2,500 years later, the site of about 15 miles north of Zohar was used as an extensive burial ground during the period of the kingdom. Here, more than 5,000 ancient burials from the 1st century BC to the 4th century AD have been identified. Around the same time, Jewish families were also moving from the region of Zohar, into. moving into the region of Zohar, and purchasing date or, or orchards and farms. Scores of later Jewish tombstones found at Zohar attested to the Jewish community's continued presence in the region throughout late. Antiquity. Keep reading. During the by Saturnine period, um, Zohar became the center of thriving Christian community. Local Christians built an impressive monastery to commemorate the cave where they believed Lot and his daughters had found refuge during the destruction of Samuels, Salvangabar. The town was even the site of a major Christian bishopic. As such, it is no surprise that the hundreds of ancient burials and Greek 
inscribed Christian tombstone have been found at Zora. Zora, and I'll pause there. But I want us to understand something. Can you imagine if God never spared Zohar? They found more than 5,000 tombs. Christian Lee and uh, flourish in that land. The Jews flourish in that land. Many nations flourish in that land. Why am I saying that? You never know the, 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 the result of intercession. God interceded for, for Zohar for several, several reasons. He wanted somebody to go to. But God wanted to do something else. Can you imagine if Saddam had been spared and Gomorrah had been spared? God never wanted to destroy them. They deserved it. He never wanted to, 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 to judge them. Why am I saying that? There are people out there that deserve judgment. But God will turn based on all inter intercession. There are people that deserve it. The fact is that if a man is not, not in Christ, he deserves it. He's under judgment. But God wants us to begin to intercede for the guilty that, that the grace of God can be shown to them. <clears throat> but I, I did this brief study because I wanted to bring out the points. That there's more to God. That sometimes just reading the scriptures, not enough. We need to start to think about it, spend time looking at it. Dig it up. Look at things that come out of it. Because sometimes there are things, deep depths. People sometimes say that God is against homosexuality, and, and it is. But he's not against homosexuals. Against the, the act, not the person. The, the act. He's against the act, not the person. He wants to spare them. Because he has a plan that's bigger than just them. God not against murderers. He's against murder. But murderers are people. Sometimes people do crime because of different things in their lives. And we as Christians can't afford to be offended by people. We begin to pray for them. Sometimes God allows people to offend us because we will not pray for them otherwise. My encouragement is to start to dig into the scriptures. Don't just read it. Begin to dig into it. Take a pen and paper. Go somewhere quiet and look at it. Read it aloud. Look it up. Check it out. Amen. I hope you have been blessed by it. Amen. Any comments? Any questions? We're closed. I think it's great to dig deeper. As um, you were sharing, I thought about a question that uh, children and youth ask, and I, I bet some adults too, um, we have this question, but maybe we don't um, voice it, is when you look at the Bible, uh, I've heard children have said, my own son has said, the God of the Old Testament look, it seems like a different God than the God of the New Testament. And um, I remember one time Jafar said, well, that, that God of the Old Testament, I don't want to, I don't want to know that God, that God, that, that God's too hard. Um, just if you could answer like what, and I, I know the textbook response is, oh, they were under law, we're under grace. But if you could answer it, uh, um, like say you were asked that, what would you give as a response as to where to study to have an understanding of why it seems as if it's a, it's a different God from the Old Testament and the New? I'm gonna find a scripture and show it to you. New scripture. I'm going to use one of the tools that's all the Bible. Um, scripture in, is in Luke one thirty seven. Find Bible Hover. To I'm going to use the phone and look one to send.
When I use a tool to help you. Let me you can't see my screen. Luke 137. Let me find it. With, with this tool, you can you can look at more than one. The same scripture in many translations. Look at the look at ESV. Uh, English. Well, nothing would be impossible to God. Yeah. Um look at look at the barrier. Well, nothing would no be word from God will ever fail. Very uh nothing would well, ever nothing would be impossible to God. Yeah. The King version says, New King version. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Look at the American Sunday. For nothing will be impossible, God. Then I go, go, go. Amplify. Amplify, look at this. For with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. All right. No, no, it's talking about. My machine getting slow. Luke 1. It's talking about John the Baptist being born and Jesus coming after him. But it makes a statement. Chart it differently, but this is the gist of it. Nothing from no one will be impossible with God. There are things that God wanted to do, he could not do until Jesus came. There are things that God wanted to show, but he could not show because until Jesus came. He had to die on the cross. So what that means is that the Old Testament was before Jesus. The thing that people look at sometimes and misunderstand what God wanted to do. He had no choice sometimes. We saw where Satan came and accused Solomon and Gomorrah before God. The outcry against the nation. We saw in um, Ezekiel, he said that, that um, that the people committed sin. God wanted to spare them, but nobody was found to, 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 to intercede yeah, yeah. for them. That's what Jesus came and did. He stood in the gap. Yeah. The, the things that were impossible with God up to that time not become possible because Jesus came. The thing that God could not do. Why? Because of his word. No, the answer the question proudly. The God in the Old Testament is Grace conceal. God wanted to do it, but he couldn't do it. Because it was concealed. God at the New Testament is grace, grace revealed. Think about King David and Bathsheba. They committed murder. They should have died according to scriptures. But they became the great grandparents of Jesus through Mary and Joseph. Two of their sons, Nathan and Solomon. Great great grandparents of Jesus, Moses and Joseph and Mary. That was grace revealed. It was concealed and the Old Testament. God wanted to do it, but he couldn't do it. Because of sin, because of sacrifice does not be made, made as yet. So what you're looking at in the Old Testament is 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 God not being able to do what he wants. It's like um in the book of, book of Esther. Um what's his name? No. Haman. Haman went to the king, got them to pass a law to destroy the zoo, the Jews. And the king could do nothing against it. He had to write another law to to contract the law. Could not, the, the laws of the of the Medes and Persians could not be even the king couldn't change it. That's what the, the word of God is like. God cannot change his word. He said in the Genesis that the seed of the woman shall crush it. Jesus had to come 
for men to experience his grace. The things that God could not do because of sin unto Jesus dying on the cross. Satan had a legal right. What you see, I mean, Satan coming to God and said, God, I want to smite you. God, I want to hit Moses. God, I want to do so and so. And God could not tell him no because he had a legal right. I think though, um, Pastor David. <clears throat> yes, sir. You might. I think though, um, if if I, if I'm interpreting Sister Claudine Numbers' comments, I think it's probably more in the context of when you look in the Bible and you attribute f from from a natural perspective some of some of these horrible acts or what may be or may perceive to be horrible acts um and you juxtapose that against the, the the god as you talk about grace reveal it's almost as if the people you may have people's minds who want to think that the god of the old testament was somehow different um, from from the God of the New Testament, I guess probably because under the New Testament they cannot they cannot attribute or or associate something like the parting of the Red Sea and then the sea coming back now and overturning so many people, um, or even the very the very plagues in in the Book of Exodus. And so I guess what's happening is that you may find some people who might say, boy, the, the God of the Old Testament seems be more wicked than the God of today. I, I hear what you're saying, but again, we have to look at the fact that the thing that God wanted to do, he could not do. We're blaming mm -hmm. blame, blame him for for a thing that he, he wanted to prevent, but he could not prevent it. That's on, that's on, is, is the mindset about God, that God, can do anything he want. No, he can't. He has to abide by his word. He has to fulfill his word. He cannot violate his word. He cannot. And and I think also to, to add to what you just said a while ago, um, because Satan knows that. Yes, he does. I, I think he, he, therefore, it emboldens him. Yes. To actually come before God because it's almost like a challenge. Whereas if to say, listen, your very own it's almost as if he's trying to say to God, your very own words entrap you. Yes. Uh, it, it, in other words, that kind of a mindset because he knows of the holiness of God and, and that God not going against his very word. Think about this when David when David sinned with Bathsheba and murdered her wife, his wife. Sorry, husband. her husband. Um God said something to David that what you have done has, has given the, the enemies of the Lord cause against me, against him. You have given the, 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 the um, enemies of the Lord. You have freed them out to do what they want. They will fight for you. Second Samuel twelve fourteen. I'll find it. Verse thirteen said, David said to Nathan, I've sinned against the Lord. Look, look, look at verse fourteen says. Can I read it? Nevertheless, cry? because by this deed you have shown utter contempt for the word of the Lord, the son born to you will surely die. And Nathan had gone. Keep reading. And Nathan had gone home. The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. Look, look at what, what, what the, um, the, the King James, New King James Version says. However, however, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme 
the child also who is born to you shall surely die. You know, Michael, son, 1995. However, because by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born to you shall surely die. Amplified. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have given a great opportunity to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme him, the son that is born to you shall certainly die. Well, what he's saying that, listen, without realizing, realizing sometimes we give to Satan legal rights. Sometimes we give him legal, he's a legalist, he knows the scriptures. Yeah. yeah. He knows the scriptures. And trust me on that, because he knows it, you need to know it as well. He's a legalist, and he knows his rights. He has a right to, 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 to attack you for sin. Except the blood of Jesus Christ is there for you. He knows. You understand what, what, what I'm trying to get at? Am I clear? Yeah, man, clear, man, clear, clear. Yes, thank you. It's clear. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. Okay. Well, thank you, Uncle David. Yeah, man. Well, okay. well, what do you have to do? Well, what what has been doing to me is causing me to, to look at the word again. Mm -hmm. At the scriptures again. Begin to dig into it myself. The Christians don't have the time to, to, to dig up the scriptures and they are stuff that's happening. Yeah. That is it's like um Joshua said to when he when destroyed Jericho, the man who's, who will build it back, his first man son shall die. At, when they laid the foundation, when they put up the gates, last son will die. In the time of Omri, father of, of Ahab, a man, a man built it back here, higher. And his first son died when they laid the foundation. Last son died when he put up the gate. There's something written because we don't know it, it can work against us. See, that is a legalist. Mm -hmm. The legalist. The, the, that's why I pray for, for my family. Because if I don't pray, I, I'm thinking they have they have sinned against God. And if someone don't stand in the gap, make up the edge, see that see them can run around and do whatever he wants. Don't assume. Many Christians don't 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 pray. They don't realize the importance of praying. Standing in the gap. Standing in the gap. There's a book I wrote called um, "Effective Interceding for for the End Time Harvest." I put the link in in, in the in the box. Anybody want to get a copy can can get a copy. I try to address those things. Amen. Any, any more questions for a close? All right. Okay. Should I pray? Yeah, yes, you can. You can. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to dig deeper. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are you're calling us uh, deeper, deeper depths in your word and um, we're so grateful and we thank you for Uncle David and his dedication to teach us and to facilitate this of growing deeper. We join our faith together to receive the blessing of number 624 through 26. The Lord bless you and watch guard and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, merciful and giving favor to you. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace tranquility of heart and life continually in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Enjoy Jesus Phil week. Thank you, Uncle David. I'm just telling you guys that we have gotten a main speaker for the for Go Conference 2023. She is um Dr. Bishop um London Osborne. Her father was Teal Osborne. And she has a ton of experience with mission field and preaching and see miracles. To come to help to train us. Well, invite people. I'm going to ask everybody to invite as many as they can to come to learn how to, how to minister. 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 Minister.
Amen. God bless. God bless you. Blessings, blessings. Yeah, God bless you all. Have a good evening. God bless you all. Have a Jesus-filled week. Come, kid.